Hello and welcome to this video on total internal reflection and the endoscope. Total internal reflection happens when something, when light moves from a dense medium to a less dense medium. So our dense mediums could be plastic, glass or water and our less dense, less dense medium is generally air. If you want more information about what light does when it travels from dense to a less dense medium, I suggest you go and watch my Ask Primrose video on refraction. So refraction, reflection and refraction come up a lot in this. You can see I've got my boundary here and my normal. My light ray comes in here and just as you've seen before, some of it is reflected and some of it is refracted. I have my angle of incidence and my angle of reflection which are measured against the normal. And you will notice that this drawing is done with a pencil and a ruler. In P3, it is very, very important that you have your pencil and your ruler and that you use them when you're answering exam questions. So, tiny bit of maths that you need to know, the critical angle. The critical angle, which is C, is easily worked out by taking the refractive index and then 1 over sine of C. Dense material, so um, plastic, glass or water, is going to have a high refractive index, so it has a low critical angle. There will be lots of total internal reflection taking place. So if our angle of incidence, that's against the normal here, is less than the critical angle, most of the light is going to be refracted and a tiny bit is going to be reflected. Remember, we're talking about going from a dense to a less dense medium here. And yet again, I've drawn with pencil and a ruler. If that angle of incidence is equal to the critical angle, you're going to have some reflected and some refracted. Your total internal reflection is going to take place when your angle of incidence is larger than the critical angle. You are going to have 100% reflection and no refraction. This is called total internal reflection. This is useful for endoscopes. So an endoscope is just an optical fibre and inside, in there they send a light ray down and the whole way down is totally internally reflected. This is useful for surgery. So we have a very small wire which is going to have two optical fibres going down it. One's going to be light in and one's going to be light out. This is going to travel to a computer. The advantages of this are is that um, surgery is going to be done with a small hole. So there's going to be less blood loss, so there's going to be less chance of infection and a small scar. So instead of having a large scar across your abdomen, if you have, say, your appendix taken out, it is now just a small scar that is very unnoticeable. So these are your questions for today. I want you to pause and try these for yourself. So, what size does the angle of incidence need to be for total internal reflection to take place? What type of medium to what type of medium does total internal reflection happen? Maybe use the total internal reflection. How do you calculate the critical angle? And will a material with a high refractive index totally internally reflect more or less? So. Pause and try these for yourself. So these are your answers here. Let's have a look at them. So what size of angle, what size does the angle of incidence need to be for total internal reflection to take place? It needs to be larger than the critical angle. Total internal reflection, reflection happens when something goes from a dense to a less dense medium. An endoscope is the use of total internal reflection. The critical angle is calculated by the refractive index is equal to 1 over sine c. And a material with a high refractive index will totally internally reflect more. There are your answers. I hope you got 5 out of 5. If you didn't, have a go again.